People often say if you want to protect something, you know, start a rumor that it's going to be taken away from them and whether they appreciate it or not, and then they want to come out and, and protect it. When my children were young, in the 70s, we would go out exploring and we found the towpath and thought what a great place, the river on our right and the canal on the left, and it was just beautiful. Obviously a place with wonderful potential. When I got down here, I said, great, we're right on a river. I can go out fishing. In doing so, I realized that every time I got to the river, I had to traverse this canal. And I began to wonder about the canal. What, what's that all about? Why is that there? I guess it was probably in the early 90s we found out that the city had had some discussions with a developer. The objective, I think, was to put together enough of the parcels out there that you could build a golf course. In the meantime, a colleague of the developer told me that he thought it was going to be great to be a golf course because, after all, it's nothing but a snake-infested cesspool. And that, well, some people think it's a cesspool, some of us think it's a paradise. I think uh, the canal was, uh, for many years, considered a rather unsavory and unsafe place. It was more interesting from a news perspective as to who had fallen in or how many cars might be at the bottom of the canal. When we talk about Augusta and we talk about golf courses, it's almost synonymous. And who would say no to that? There were a series of articles in the newspaper about things they were planning to do on the canal. And I said, this physically beautiful and historically significant resource now, what's going to happen to that? Dayton Shirell heads up the Augusta Canal Authority. But as of now, the authority has no authority to stop any projects along the canal. And so far, Tom Swift kept calling me and saying, Jenny, you've got to do something. You're on the Canal Authority. And I said, well, Tom, I can't do anything, but you can. You can start a group. So he did. He started the Savannah Waterways Forum. Uh, you're going to be hearing from us that we're going to want you to turn out for this meeting. I think we should tackle The only thing I was really interested in was, was getting the people to really get out and fight for what belonged to them. The Savannah Waterways Forum group were very savvy at public relations and activism. Their strategy was to come forward in front of the media, the public, and everyone and say, we'd like you to adopt a moratorium. I guess if there was any one particular turning point, it might have been one of the meetings in 1992. This canal area would have been used far more extensively. So many people came prepared to speak. As close to natural state as possible. There was a point where people couldn't get off the elevators. There were so many people packed into the room and in the hall. The self-interest of a handful of developers and builders is being given preference over the wishes of the majority of the residents of Augusta. I said, I'll have 3,000 people down in the parking lot and we'll have bullhorns. And you're the mayor. I don't think you want that many people against you, but that's what's going to happen. I guarantee it. I feel very, very inclined to agree with many people who think that this should be a green space, a park area. Uh, the more I've viewed the uh, area, the more I think it would be a, a great entranceway to Augusta. And uh, perhaps that is not the location for just one development after the other.